Hey guys, how's it going? So today's project is filling up our brand new root cellar with all the produce that we have hanging out around our house in different locations. You can see it's been freshly painted. In fact, it's still tacky. I have to be careful working around it, but it's essentially done. The last thing we're waiting on is a little wall unit heater, which we don't need right now, uh, but we wanna have that installed so that all of the like infrastructure is done. Uh, but I just wanted to give you an update on what it looks like. And we've also brought up a bunch of potatoes, onions, garlic, We've got pumpkins and squash to bring in and strung up peppers. It's just really fun. So there she is. All looking nice and clean. Now we didn't do anything fancy to finish these boards. It's just like press board that we painted white just to make it look tidy and kind of match the rest of the walls in here a little bit. It looks a lot cleaner than everything else. Uh, but take a look inside and I just recently gave you an update. So there's not a ton different in here. You can see though that we have our dahlias already in here. That box is full of gladiolus. I still need to bring elephant ear bulbs out here. Oh. Anyway, so those are there. They may not stay there depending on how I need to organize today. And then we've got our beets and our carrots in those crates. And then the menagerie that we have on the wall here. I'll explain it again. Uh, the little heater will go somewhere like right here. But that's our AC unit. And then we've got the cool bot right here. And what the Coolbot does is, is it helps regulate the temperature. It's also something we can uh, control from our phones so we can set humidity and temperature and it will also alert us if something gets off. Like if we have it set at something in a certain temperature and it malfunctions, then we will know so we can come out and fix it. Um, anyway, it also does something to the AC unit because AC units will only cool to a certain temperature. So this actually heats up a little part inside the unit and tricks it into being like, it thinks it's warmer in this room than it actually is. So it'll continue to cool things down. So we could make this into like a refrigerator. It'll go down to 35 in here if we wanted it to. Um, and then over here behind this piece of foam board, there is a vent fan if we should need it. And then this is a manual controller right here. I'll show you how it works. I noticed like, look at that 95% humidity, way too humid in this room. And so I just reset it, which you can set your high temp and your low temp there. High humidity, which I set at 70. It just needs to um, fix itself here. I just reset it. And low humidity, I set at 62. So we should be good to go there. I really have no idea how I'm gonna organize stuff in here. Uh, today because I only have two shelving units that were free and they're just like baker's racks and I figured you know this year I don't have a ton of stuff. I'm trying to carry over. Uh, well, I do I have a lot of pumpkins and squash that I could squeeze in here uh, But I don't have a lot of like jarred items or anything like that um, So I thought I'll just use those two. I'm gonna step out. It's getting a little louder in here uh, I'll use those two baker's racks We'll see how they work, and then I can kind of gauge how I use the, the space before I invest in bigger shelves, um, because I don't wanna make the wrong choice. Whatever we put in there is most likely gonna have to be built inside that room, and I don't wanna have to build things more than once, and it is raining. Oh my goodness. Can you guys see that or hear it? I can hear my chickens. I'm so happy that we have the run all winterized. They're just staying nice and dry and warm in there. And there's my two shelving units. <laughs> I've got to go get them out of the rain. Maybe we could take a look at the studio while we're out over there. Do a little update quick. Oh, it looks so much different than it used to. Look at this. So we've had a crew here working real hard to get all of the um, drywall, like insulation drywall done. And you can see they've textured already. And it's just like, oh my word. Like it looks huge in a way, but then it also, since we lost, you know, we dropped the ceiling down, it was vaulted. Um, but it's a lot easier to heat when you don't have a huge vaulted ceiling. So that does make it look like appear a little bit smaller. Also, it'll help once we have all of the coverings off the windows and such. <laughs> Garage doors are supposed to be here on December 4th. But oh my word, this is gonna be nice. And look at all of those boxes. Those are all gonna be plug-ins, all of them. 
will have plugins everywhere. So I'm thinking like grow light, grow light, grow light, grow light, <laughs> grow light right there. We'll most, most likely be filming this direction right here against that wall. There will be a door framed in right there that was access to the other bay. And then of course we'll have the garage door here. So we thought that this would be done by the end of October. <laughs> uh, here we are mid-November and I don't think we'll even be out here until the end of December. Um, so I'm not sure how much we'll actually have a chance to utilize it before a baby girl is born. Um, but it's just, it's such a fun prospect to know that the space will be out here and it'll be comfortable because we have gone through so many years of hot summers and really cold winters and just like have forged ahead and have done projects anyway, just freezing cold, like my fingers are numb trying to do little crafty projects or whatever. And we do them outside typically because it's better lighting. Um, and it's fun, like it's all part of the like process and it's part of the learning curve and it's, I don't know, it's part of our journey. This will make it a lot more comfortable. Okay, let's get these shelves and get them taken over to the cellar. Okay, you gotta come out with me, Russell. Come on, bud. Come on, Russell. Come on, kitty kitty. Good boy, come on, all the way out. I don't wanna shut you in. <laughs> okay, of course they're all wet, excellent. I've got both baker's racks in here and I've got all this space on this side which is gonna be perfect because the potatoes and onions in these baskets will be the next thing I line up on the ground I had initially thought about putting the dahlia crates over here but I think we'll just leave them they fit against that wall like I could not have measured that better or planned for that better and they're really lightweight they're easy to move around so we'll probably go into each crate once a month to check on the tubers let me show you though I did check because they've been in here for a few weeks now. They're looking good. So like right here we have a Cafe LA. And if we kind of unearth the tubers, you can see they feel still feel really nice and firm. There's no desiccation. It's not too wet. So I think we're doing really, really well so far. Also moved the beets and carrots just to the floor on this side. They slid right underneath that shelving unit beautifully. I might rearrange so it doesn't stick out so far, but I don't think it's gonna matter. I'm gonna use the shelving units for all the pumpkins and squash here in just a minute, but let's move all the baskets of onions and potatoes in. out perfect Aaron actually came out he's gonna help me with some squash and pumpkins in a minute but he uh, cut some scrap pieces of wood so that I can raise one of these up on a bottom one they're really lightweight there's not a whole lot left in really any of these right here I've got huckleberry gold potatoes go ahead and show you what they look like can't remember exactly when we harvested them but it's been a while not starting to sprout or anything they're really firm so they're staying nice they'll stay even better in here Anyway, if I want like Yukon Gold, which I think is what the variety is down there, I can just easily lift this off and grab some. See, I've got my garlic there, and I've got my stack of onions. These are just amazing. These candy onions, and they're still really firm as well. Ready? Pumpkin and squash.
fit in here beautifully. I could not have planned it better for this first year. So I'll give you an overall look at the whole room and then we'll go shelf by shelf and I'll uh, talk about the different varieties that I'm storing. So starting right outside the cellar, look at that view. Oh, it's just such a happy thing. I love it. So we've got food storage bins right there, right in front of us. And then our baskets, a shelving unit completely full. Our string of peppers there on the wall. Those are the hot and heavy peppers. And then of course the dahlia tubers there. And then our last shelving unit completely full to the brim. I had one squash left over there on the ground. And then I just left these crates how they were from the beginning. And I did save this little paper right here. This is the one that came with the root storage bin from Gardener's Supply. I just thought it'd be really handy to have kind of a quick guide as to what temperature and humidity each one of these crops kind of likes to have. And we're just going for a happy medium to hopefully keep everything as long as possible. Okay, so for a closer look at things, let's start right here. I've got some jars. These are sealed jars that are still in the packaging. And I've got some herbs drying that I want to put in these and maybe store them out here. I've got some dry food storage bins as well. So these are the type that have the gamma lids, so they're airtight. None of the moisture in the air will ever enter those tubs. Um, and they're like pest and rodent proof, all that sort of thing. My parents have always stored a bunch of dry goods in their root cellar in these type of bins. So I will, I've started with sugar, rice, and flour, and I'll probably add to that. And then we've got our baskets of onions there. We already kind of took a look at those. We've got candies on the top and Walla Walla's on the bottom, which are both very sweet onions. And I'm actually surprised they've kept as nicely for as long as they have. Um, we have been using on them. It looks like we haven't used a single thing. And then we've got all of our potatoes. We have Russet Burbanks, Huckleberry Golds, Red Norlands, uh, Yukon Golds, and something else I can't remember. German Butterballs. Then we've got our Italian garlic here, which I have a little bit. This is all of my good stuff that wasn't like pierced or damaged or anything like that. And then over here, I'll try not to move too fast. Over here in one of these, uh, these came from Gardener Supply, aren't these cute? They're like potato storage baskets, but I put my other garlic. See, I've got more that like some of them got a little bit damaged or like the skin wasn't quite as intact. And so I'm using through all of these first. Closer look at our peppers. So I strung those up in a video for you guys earlier on. They've been drying in the house and so they'll be great out here. And then on the top shelf, I've got a basket full of acorn squash. I've got the white acorn here. I only had three of those left. I use a lot to decorate. And then I have tay bells. Look at those, those are a good size right there. I mean, this basket is just chock full of them. And then we've got Yokohama squash and Kojiju, I think. Kind of a mix of these squashes in this basket here. Getting ready to do a really yummy cream of garlic soup. I'll show you guys in a video here pretty quick in these. Next we have Pipian from Tuxpan squash. And all of these are three different varieties here, but they look very similar. So Pipian from Tuxpan are these kind of squatty round ones. The great big ones are the green striped kushas, which I believe, look at that one right there. I believe, and I have read that they make excellent pies, like really good for sweet kind of squash cooking. And then the ones that are shaped like this are called North Falkland Island. Don't ask me how I ended up with so many that looked the same. I didn't really plan that, but they clearly yielded very well. I used a bunch of these in decorating and, and have given a bunch of these away as well. And you know what, for all the effort that the Dahlia tubers <laughs> take to save, I think about how much money is just sitting right here in Dahlia tubers and that makes me feel good. Just like, I don't know, taking care of what you've bought and perpetuating your own crops and multiplying your own crops, really. I mean, I have way more tubers sitting right there than I started with at the beginning of the season. And then the top of this one, we already talked about the garlic. I have honey nut butternut squash, the best butternut squash I have ever eaten, ever. I took two of these inside already and they actually, as they age, let me see if we can look in there. You can see like, hold on. So you can kind of see the color difference there. And these started pretty green. Like it got really cold before these started to ripen all the way, but they're doing it. They're ripening kind of on their own in here. 
and like I said I took two inside and I've made a couple of things and it's like my favorite butternut ever I went and bought more seeds down at my parents garden center after I tried the first one uh, we've got both a mix of strawberry crown Jaradel I'm not sure if I'm saying that Jaradel and sweet meat all really long storage life on these really thick meat um, we've got more of those down in here and the one on the floor this level we've got sugar pie pumpkins and we've got Quaker pie pumpkins that cool and let's see I am not sure I cannot remember and I even watched our video back to see if I labeled what these were when I harvested them they were deep green and I couldn't find a label so I don't know exactly what variety so this will be our interesting kind of wild card and then we've got kind of more North Falkland Islands there's a Pippian from Tuxpan and then there are a couple of uh, porcelain dolls there's one and then there's the, the other one right there and then of course we've got our carrots in here and our beets in there and then I also have a bag of walnuts and it looks like our humidity level is cruising down I'm hoping to get it down to 60 today I opened this up and I've got the vent fan running so we should be good here in just a little bit and that is pretty much it for today's video I just really wanted to make it a priority to come out here get everything set up um, right as soon as I knew everybody was done with what they needed to do I just didn't want any of my stuff to be in their way um, so even though the paint is still tacky in places I wanted to get this stuff out here now the inside has been painted for a while so there's not even any fumes I can't smell any paint at all I was just kind of waiting for the exterior to be painted um, so anyway I'm just thrilled with how everything fit in here and it's just been one of those things that I've always really wanted to have but we always have kind of bumped it down the priority list one because I mean I didn't really know where I wanted to put it I didn't know how to go about it I knew nothing about root cellars and this is gonna be a learning curve for me figuring out what um, happy medium to set everything at to keep everything happy um, so I expect that it'll take me several seasons to kind of figure all those things out but it's gonna be an exciting thing and I can't wait to like it makes me feel excited to can again I used to can a lot in fact there was a couple of years I canned so much that I burned myself out and it really hasn't been until recently that I've been kind of interested in doing it again <laughs> but having a space to store everything that's proper will be really nice so anyway thank you guys so much for watching I'll be giving you updates as we go through the winter and of course you're gonna see some cooking probably coming out of here too I'll show you some of the recipes that I'm gonna be trying out with some of these things so hope you guys are all having a great day and we will see you in the next video bye